Good afternoon, everybody. How's how y'all doing? Good. Afternoon sesh. Almost there through day one. So uh, I'm Dan Krolchek. This is Scott, and uh, we'll get started. So let's uh, let's talk about uh, what we're going to just cover here real quickly. Uh, we'll both just do quick introductions about who we are and what we do. We'll talk about the series of five so far videos we've done. What's next? And then we'll leave just a little bit of uh, Q and A time um, about the the 360 video series that we did all together. So uh, with that, Scott. I'm Scott Warren. I'm the GM for uh, KPIX CBS stations, and. Uh, we're doing a lot of stuff. We're kind of the incubator for all of CBS stations doing innovative storytelling. Great, and uh, I'm Dan Krolchuk. I'm with a company called Creator Up. So we're a video production platform and network of 8,000 global creators uh, and an Amazon-esque type video platform that makes video easy. Um, and that's how we got to, st got to start talking about the project between our group of folks. Um, I came from a news background that was tied back to iHeart and USA Today. And Scott, just, I mean, maybe just a, a bit more about what you do. You undersold yourself a little bit, but you know, it's more than just uh, KPIX here, right? Yeah, now bounced around all around uh, uh, media, Weather Channel when we started doing the augmented AR, VR uh, sets, and uh, worked way up to th launched a couple of cable networks. But the whole time it was about how do we tell stories differently? And so when I came to CBS, that was our goal, was to figure out the way, way to tell stories in a whole new way. So uh, I met Scott through a friend, uh, I can say, with Megid uh, Media Group, Megid Consulting. And she said, you gotta meet Scott uh, for what he's doing at CBS. They're innovators, they're like the skunk works inside CBS in terms of doing new innovation and different things. Uh, because I was pitching our friend Tristan about what we do in VR 360 production. So we're cinematic storytellers. We work with Verizon, Dell, YouTube, Kawhi Coffee, Oakley. Like we create short form VR cinematic and best scene in headset. Um, and we got together and I was like, you know, news, it's not new for news to do 360 VR. And if you look it up, you'll see interesting things from, you know, previous keynote speakers here that have been from Wall Street Journal, Time. And what's happened a lot of times, they've either done really great, you know, VR, AR, XR, mixed reality concepts, um, or they've just stuck a camera out uh, with a 2D crew and filmed something and they got pretty good views. And there's, if you look up, you'll see the Blue Angels and some great storytelling that's been done over time. But it kind of paused, um, and Scott and I started talking about like what what's gotten in the way, like why aren't people doing a little bit more of this, and kind of why now is a good time. So when we met early 22, it was more about what's happening. Of course, at that time, yeah, I showed a grid where metaverse as a buzzword was absolutely taking off. I mean, uh, Facebook just rebranded. Uh, Insta360 was new. There was new abilities to meet and and watch parties inside VR. The meta price, uh, they had just launched the two, and then they increased the price, and of course, you know, headset announcements were coming one after the other. It was just like, this one just came out, and then Apple news just came out, and you know, we started talking, it was like, Apple's gonna announce a new headset, Apple's gonna announce a new headset, and more people started talking about Apple headset content strategy, um, including, you know, you guys. It was like, yep. we need to be prepared for this. Um, and then again, you know, more headsets came out. Vive came out with a great headset that actually they became part of this series as well. But let's uh, just show you some of the clips from what we've done so far. So this is a little montage of some of the visuals and we'll talk about the projects.
uh, still gives me a little bit of goosebumps. It's not you know running down to the neighborhood fire and dropping a 360 camera in the middle of things. But um, this is the QR code we'll, that'll take you right to the playlist. I would definitely encourage you just check these out, uh, of course, on your phone, which you know that is VR, right? Watching it a 360 video on your phone. Uh, T tag that into your headset. We always say best to watch uh, in, in the headset. And we'll talk about now some of the, the why behind each of these stories. Like you saw a little trailer there, if you will, but um, some great performance happening. Like things we never expected to see or we were hoping to see. Uh, and just in terms of total views and audience engagement and how much this has taken off. I mean, I told Scott, I mean, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to be, you know, a, a big, big fish in a, in a small pond right now because there's there's VR channels. I mean, Meta's got a place and everybody wants content. And we're like, make it and publish it and get it out there because there's great stories to be told. Um, and then we'll talk about what, what kind of this really cool byproduct of this. And that was one of the biggest single market you know, promotions of wearing headsets. I mean, this entire conference, I mean, we're all alpha P1 users. I mean, everybody knows a lot, if not almost everything about this category. Um, you go out into the community and like we've all done, put a headset on somebody and they struggle, right? Like they haven't done it or the last thing they did was a roller coaster ride uh, and they're like, oh, I got you know motion sickness because that was five years ago with an old headset or something and this is amazing content. So these are a couple of clips and you wanna just, this was your idea, like how we show the newsroom and then stream it to a, a back screen. But. Yeah, the whole idea is, you know, we want to get people to get the headsets on and get into this immersive storytelling. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the, the feeling of being on scene inside a story is game changing. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to take these stories that we shot, and there are a bunch of them, and we edited them both in 2D and 360. And what we did was we, on television, we played the 2D version. But at the end of the 2D version, we have the reporter come out with the anchor, they put the headset on, and then the output of the headset goes to this giant wall behind her so we can see what she's looking yeah. at as she they that. go to it. Okay, so first you're gonna do this. You're gonna take your goggles, you're gonna put them on. Okay. I'm gonna hand you these. All right. And you're already gonna start seeing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Is it our, our... So there's one, here's another one. Oh, the chill now. <laughs> the snow there. Wow, I really do feel like I am right there with everyone with this experience. Is there going to be a point where we're, where we're going to be going down the slopes? Yes, yeah, so okay. we actually put some of those cameras on the helmets of CJ, one of our Amazing. photographers who's incredible, and he's an actual an actual skier I can't mm -hmm. ski. So, <laughs> uh, But you really get that oh, feeling wow. of going down those slopes when we're on the gondolas, you can uh -huh. take in those breathtaking views, you see the lake. I mean, we looked for stories where there's heart to the story. This is a great mm -hmm. story about a young man, but also that experiential part of it. So it's a combination of the visual plus the storytelling that we're used to telling here. It's and uh, why don't you just kind of talk about that? That's Itai, who's, who's teeing up the, the anchors to do it. But this was morning news, I think five and 10 o'clock, probably 15, 20 different segments in yeah. one of the major markets. Yeah, no, we're, we're looking, we ran this, I don't know, five, six times in a day at different day parts. And so the audience gets to see not only what the story is, because the stories are great. But on top of that, gets to experience what they're seeing and maybe convert them to go out, find this. We talked to about how you can look at it on the phones and on the computer mm -hmm. if you want to do that. But really through the headsets, the way to go. Yeah. The, um, oh, this was another one as well. So let's, let's talk about some of the behind the scenes and the per project vision of each one of these. And then we'll talk about why. Because each, each, uh, this was unique in terms of, you know, you guys don't typically outsource your right. production. Right. Um, and we got to like how we would do it, how we would choose a project. Uh, but let's kind of just frame up a little bit. Or do you just want to go into each project no, briefly? Yeah, let's do the first so, one. Um, Stranger. This is just some behind the scenes footage. One of our 
guy loves loves Tiny Planet. Uh, but um, you know, a lot of drone shots in there. Let's let's talk briefly about each one of these because I, I you know for us we get emotional as we both have talking about each one of these stories. But how about let's just do thirty seconds on on each one of these unique stories. Well, to set it up, you know, CBS is uh, is has been a great storyteller for all along. You look at sixty minutes. You look at CBS Sunday Morning. Uh, emotional, character-driven stories, and forever we've been trying to make compelling emotional stories. So when we started looking at this, you, you, you've seen the 360 demos of people jumping out of planes and doing all that, and you feel that. So we thought, how do we take the emotional storytelling, the character-driven, the seeing something through the eyes of someone, marry it with this technology, put you, the viewer, in right next to that character. So not only are you hearing this story arc and this well-told story, but you're feeling it right alongside of them. Mm -hmm. The, the, the um, experience is so much more compelling. And you, you actually, it, it brings empathy to, you, to the viewer when you're in there, because you really feel that story. Yeah. So this first one was, um, uh, Jessica Birch is our meteorologist, and she's also a Black Hawk helicopter pilot. So she flies around and makes rescues in the, the woods um, for the Army National Guard. So we put her up at Fleet Week in a jet, um, and she actually took the stick. But the story, it could have been just an experience, fly with Jessica, twirl around. But the story was about her experience being a young female aviator and how few women were actually in aviation. Yeah, yeah. Really fun production. We put five 360 cameras on. Uh, we used all different kinds of cameras, everything from the Insta360 Titan uh, to GoPro. Uh, in this case, we had five. I mean, literally clicking a, a camera out to the outside of the jet, and he's taking off. He's like, I can't guarantee it's going to be there when we come back. It <laughs> could end up in the ocean somewhere. Uh, but mounting them in new places, uh, that was a great story. Um, we, we'll come back to this as yeah, we, as we go through each one of these. But uh, this one I loved, it was in the Redwoods in, in Santa Cruz area, but why don't we talk about Jay Wallace? So Jay Wallace is one of the best, most well-known environmentalists on the planet. He was the first guy to track a turtle from, from Mexico to Japan. Um, he has a, a place in uh, Santa Cruz Mountains that he built by hand. His family built this by hand. Beautiful wood structure, gorgeous thing, been there for decades. Um, it was their home. It was where he raised his kids. It's where he taught him, them the values that he has. The fires three years ago ripped through this beautiful canyon and burned his house to the ground. So we went back up with Jay, and three years later, as he's trying to figure out how to come to terms with it, how to tell his kids that their home isn't there anymore, um, what's next? How, how does he rebuild in his place that is more environmentally friendly, more um, adaptable to climate change? And then how is he seeing his land regrow along with his own perspective? And that's what the story is, and it's just beautiful. Yeah, great story. We did a, a two-day shoot, uh, stayed overnight, filmed a time-lapse 360 VR. So you look up, you see the, the stars move through this amazing property. And then we kind of came up with new ways of doing things. Like we superimposed the story of the fire. So you're looking at his, his, his new land, which is this beautiful, sustainable, glamping you know, environment that he's built there. But as he's retelling the story, you see the flames and you see his original cabin. And you, I mean, people take the headsets off and they're emotional, like they're tearing up. because. Well, and you're standing there story. with him. When your goggles are on, these two are standing there and it looks a little awkward that they're that far apart here. But when you're with them and you're standing there, you're in a conversation with him. And as he's telling his story, you can't help but get emotional about what he's been through. This was, uh, you saw some of the clips of, uh, of the gondola and you heard Itai talking about it, but uh, amazing story. We wanted, it was your idea to cover um, adaptive skiing and the different, the different angles there. And we came up with, um, you know, people know what adaptive skiing is for the most part. If you ski, you've, you've seen it. But then as part of our exploration, we realized adaptive skiing is, is happening for the blind, is happening for autistic kids. Um, and sometimes it's the skier you don't even realize. So amazing story of, of Connor and his family. Yeah, we've seen the videos of people skiing down mountains in 360 and doing flips and all of that stuff. But you take a kid who really can't um, behave, can, can't even work in the real world um, because of his disability. But for some reason, they put him on skis and he comes to life. It's totally different mm -hmm. experience. And when you're f skiing alongside of him, 
you feel that. You just see him come out like this. It's different. Yeah. And then when we talk to his mother, who is just, I mean, unbelievably shaken by the experience of watching her son, who can barely do anything on his own, ski down mountains like everybody else. And you feel, again, you feel that story. Yeah. Uh, again, literally, you know, a trip. And another trip, and, you know, speaking of just getting amazing content onto the headsets, and this is what we love is, is, you know, if you buy one of the new headsets, you take it out of the box, you put it on, you're like, what do I do next? Uh, and this is a great, a great way to put it on and watch something short. These are all four to seven minutes max. Yep. I mean, we were leaving a, a short experience that you can take, take in and engage with and do something, like be motivated to do, to learn something next. This is Waymo. Um, so this, these are driverless cars. Has anybody been in one, taking a, taking a ride in a driverless car? So now you can. Um, it's, it's pretty wild. Like even watching this from the backseat perspective and seeing the car drive through the you know, Lombard Street of San Francisco with no driver. Yeah, and, that first yeah. shot in this piece where you're looking at the people in the back seat riding, and then you look around and you turn and you see that there's nobody at the wheel, you get that feeling of what it's like to let this car do the thing for you. Yeah. And Waymo was so impressed with this, they want us to go out and start doing other experiences so they can show people, these cars really work, this, it's really safe, it's an easy experience, it's actually better than having to argue with your Uber driver. And this last one I think was uh, is one of your favorites, and. Uh, it took a lot of coordination because you can't just uh, you know just call up a freighter company and say hey we'd like to come out in the San Francisco Bay but bar pilots um, you know if if you wonder like why your toothpaste wasn't delivered during the pandemic and you heard about supply chain you know you see what happens with these guys that jump on these these freighters bar pilots are the guys who go out to San Francisco Bay and help navigate in like they literally get off one boat onto another and take people through the the dangerous sandbars that are outside the Bay Bridge which I never knew about until we did the story. Well, these, uh, this is really a story that's right on the news curve. They just held meetings, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers just held meetings, because the bay was never built to handle these kinds of freighters going through, much smaller. They've gotten bigger and deeper, and the channels they've dug are dangerous. That's why the bar pilots are there. That's, they're named bar pilots, because they keep these from going onto the sandbars. And they're kind of cowboys. Um, but they just held a meeting saying, we gotta dig these trenches deeper. And so we covered the meeting, but we went out with the bar pilots to show exactly what their, what their job is and why it's so important. What was really cool for me on this is you know, you're climbing up the ladder um, over rough seas to get on the boat, that's one thing. But standing on the bridge in 360, and you're looking out as this is going out towards the Golden Gate Bridge and the fog is coming in and envelops the boat and then you spin around and you look at the faces of the pilots, you can feel the tension on their face as they can no longer, they've got equipment and all of that, but they can't see anymore. And you feel that fog wrap around you and you look back and you're like. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, they're all, really they're all cool. cool when we started out, right? They're like, hey, we're doing a live you know, news piece and Seriously, that fog came in and it, the tension was live. Yeah, you can um, feel it. And I think you saw in an earlier clip, we sent our guy Hugh Ho up. He put a 360 camera sticking out the back of his deal. He climbed up the side of the ship with Itai, no rigging. I mean, literally the two ships are, are side by side and the guys are joking and they say, no swimming. Um, I mean, if you fall in, you're dead uh, pretty much out there. Yeah, but, that's what um, so it was pretty crazy. So let's talk about you know what's next. This was our, our first series together. Uh, where we would like to go and what's happening. I mean, we, we helped tackle through some of the obstacles around, you know, what, why was this difficult? I mean, the things that we talked about, the cameras, the teams, the editing time in a, in a 360 file, uh, way different than putting together a 2D file. I mean, five times as big, five times as much computer processing time. Well, I know. think that's what we really learned in this was there's a way to put together an experience and then there's a way to edit a story in 360 because you know, we're, we're editing in 2D stories that go like this and quick keep your interest, quick shots, get you through this story. In this one, you want the experience of being able to take somebody through a story arc, learn who this person is, find out what their challenge is, but let it breathe a minute so you can look around and see what they're up against, see them climbing the trees, see them flying through the plane, feel what they're feeling before you move on to the next thing. So it's a very yeah. different, and I think we, we, you know, the first time we put one of these together, um, you know, we, we were pretty good at storytelling. You are awesome at doing this. And, but the two of us hadn't done that before together. Yeah. And I think it was 35 revisions on the first one. We were just trying to figure it out. Over time, we've gotten this down to, 
you know, it's just a, a, a couple point. of days. I mean, we, we, a lot of our projects are typically, you know, you get two cuts, right? You get your first cut, your revisions, your second, final cut, and we just kept going back and forth and back and forth. Had to get it right. And, you know, and when you watch and edit things in headset, right, there's a million different angles that you're looking at. You're like, oh, I mean, there's, there's a, a little thing I just caught the other day, and, one of the, and they, the guys gave me a great reason why, but I was like, oh, all right. Not, you would only see that if you were on, like, your fifth watch of something. But these stories are actually that good, which is, is, is new for news. It's like you, you kind of go back and rewatch it for a whole new perspective. So. Well, and that's, that's what we're, um, why this is so important to CBS. If you think about news, 1910, we did you know, the first newsreels in theaters. In 1940 was the very first news broadcast. 1951 was the very first live event that broadcast across the country. Mm -hmm. Right here, um, uh, President Truman at the Japanese Peace Treaty Conference and a live speech to the country. And since that time, we went to color, but there really hasn't been an advancement yeah. in news storytelling. And right now, with what you guys do and the way you have brought this down to such an incredibly efficient model, um, and, and our storytelling and where we're trying to go and, and to get people to be more compelled, yeah. This is, this is the time yeah. for this kind of thing. Yeah, it's great. So, I mean, what you guys can do, uh, here's the favor request, is you know, smash any one of those stories if you can, like watch it, share it. I mean, we're all in the industry. Um, thanks to, to CBS, literally, like, th they're helping promote awareness of, of VR storytelling, which touches everything from coding to jobs to headsets to the cameras. Um, you know, our, our next step is, you know, there's a lot of CBS stations, and, We'd like to see this be a, a nationwide rollout and an international rollout. Um, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of gear, that's a lot of people, that's a lot of jobs, that's a lot of storytelling. Uh, and just imagine the potential of you know, every one of these markets running a campaign, telling people you know, it's time to, time to get a headset, it's time to engage in VR a little bit more. And I think the storytelling has a lot of different, these are basically just you know, 360 video with some graphics, um, but the, the viewer is not choosing their own adventure, but they could. I mean, they could, they could you know, follow any one of these person's stories and we could film that and go deeper. They could, they could um, inside, be inside one of the boats and click on the navigation maps. We talked about doing that with uh, Jessica's piece is, is actually showing all of the flight data. Um, takes time, editing time, money sometimes, but uh, camera makers, we need them to get involved. Headset makers, we want them to, uh, to wrap their arms around this and, uh, and be part of it, so. But for the first time, um, the technology and the process that you all have come up with has gotten it to be efficient so that we can do this on the news curve. This isn't just about going out and shooting a story and it's exp experience. Can you imagine if we're in the wildfires and we're able to go out and we're gonna take you right to the front lines and we're gonna show you this and talk to yeah. the firefighter and experience in every single direction and then we put that on the news uh, that night, the day after, and we're able to do that. Can you imagine if we were able to do this across the country at all events, at protests and marches? Can you imagine if we were able to take this on the front lines in the U Ukraine to give people that experience? It's one thing to see the pictures, it's another thing to be there and feel like you're there. And right now you said that, that news had done this before, but I don't think anybody has put together the great storytelling, the technological, the process in almost real time. Mm -hmm. And that's what's exciting about this. And if we can get that going, this is, this is a whole new, new way to experience a news story and the empathy behind that story. Any questions? Awesome, we, actually, we're pretty short yeah, on time. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll, thank uh, we'll Dan and there. Scott, yeah. everybody. We could do thank a round guys. of applause for their thank great you, presentation. I'm sure Thanks, they'll man. be around Thanks, today man. to answer any questions. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.